All right, what's up everyone, Duquesne23 here, and welcome to another Project Spark stream recap. Uh, now, this stream was kind of over, just a fun little extra type of things. Um, they talked a little bit about the beta. Unfortunately, guys, the beta may not come October. They didn't confirm that it won't be coming October, but they said, like, um, I can't remember exactly. What was it, like, uh, October or something like that? You know, so pretty much they're kind of implying that most likely the beta will be pushed to early November, which uh, some people were really upset about that. And it's like, guys, I'd rather them come out with a complete beta um, where it's completed and doesn't have a whole lot of issues and everything uh, with it I'd rather that just get pushed back and it's just the beta guys It's not like y'all are paying for this and even so um, a little description about Project Spark in case y'all do not know um, Project Spark is a free-to-play game whenever it actually comes out which it will be released in 2014 uh, We don't know exactly what date uh, but yeah, so it's a free-to-play game. You do not need the Xbox Live Gold to play it. It's for the Xbox 360, Xbox One, and Windows 8. Uh, so yeah, so it's um, the beta here in October or early November. Uh, that beta will be running for Windows 8. And um, there's going to be a beta for Xbox One that will be going on in January. So that's really awesome how, you know, they're going to have one for both because uh, most things only have one beta on one platform and then, you know, uh, especially not with PC and Xbox and stuff like that. Uh, but yeah, so um, a, another little bit more of a description uh, with this game. Pro Project Spark is pretty much a game where you could create any other game. Like you could create anything pretty much in it. Um, if you want to create a Skyrim type of game, if you want to create a JRPG um, if you want to create uh, Mario style games, uh, Pac-Man, um, Pokemon, uh, some people are already saying they're going to be creating a Pokemon style game. Uh, they've already shown off stuff where someone has created Geometry Wars and Limbo and everything like that. You could create movies in this game. Uh, so yeah, you know, someone already, uh, that they showed it in a past stream where someone remade like some uh, scenes in Star Wars and stuff like, stuff like that and even had the music going on. So that's definitely really cool. Um, so yeah, let's go ahead and get into the uh, stream recap now. All right, the first thing that they do is they show off something that Claude made. Uh, it's something really funny. It's just pretty much a goblin in a barrel. Uh, so you could do something, you can have like little mini games and stuff like this with uh, the goblin in a barrel, but that looks hilarious, the little legs running underneath. Um, but yeah, he made it to where pretty much any time the goblin moves, you know, the barrel gets raised up a little bit, so it looks like feet. And he's running around to the other barrels and hitting B, so all the other goblins are following him. Now, of course, you could do this in your game, probably, you know, with uh, just normal character. It doesn't have to necessarily be a goblin. Let's say um, you have to sneak by an area or something like that. And so you get inside a barrel and you, you know, sneak by an area. And whenever, like, the enemy or whatever looks over at you, you got to stop and you got to sit still. And once he looks away, then you, got, you know, can keep going. Uh, so... You know, just a cool little game mechanic there that uh, Claude, made, you know, like created and stuff, which a lot of his maps he was explaining that they're just pretty much uh, game mechanics in the map. He doesn't actually create too much of like a nice scenery and everything like that around the map, making it more of actual uh, play area and a level. But he likes really creating like some cool game mechanics and then, you know, people are able to take those game mechanics from his uh, little blank default world and implement them into their own, you know, game or whatever they're doing. Uh, so that's something that's really awesome and, you know, I can't wait to see what people do with this barrel thing. Uh, go ahead and leave a comment down below on if you if you would use this barrel thing, what would you use it for? Is there an idea for some sort of mini game or something that you could possibly use it for? Or would you use it in, like how I was saying, uh, within a level to try to hide from enemies and stuff? Uh, so what exactly would you use it for? Now, whenever they're in the next area, uh, someone asked if it was possible to build something like giant scalable bosses, something like uh, Shadow of Colossus, which is an amazing game. But, you know, if you could scale up bosses, you know, fight on top of them instead of just shooting at them from the ground and stuff like that. And so they went on to explain that every single object in the world, even if you scale it up and down, um, it has pretty much hit detection, so you're able to jump on all those uh, pieces, and so you're able to actually climb up. Now, you might not be able to actually, like, grab how in uh, Shadow of Colossus you're grabbing, like, I don't know what it is, like their fur or something, you know, um, on the side of them and stuff, and that's how you're able to climb up them and everything. You're probably not able to do something like that, because so far we haven't heard of any 
type of, you know, like a netting or vines or something you're able to climb up on the side of a wall. Uh, but you are still able to jump up onto, you know, pieces of the boss and make your way up to the top of the boss where possibly, you know, you can kill him by stabbing him through the head or I don't know, something like that. Uh, but yeah, so there's still ways of doing it. And of course, you can also put um, a little bit of invisible platforms on the, like some pieces. So it's a little bit easier to stay on that the boss or whatever. So you can, you know, put a flat piece on something uh, just so you can have somewhat of a base to be able to stand on and, you know, just make it invisible. And so, yeah, it's fairly simple. And one thing that was pretty funny right here, he actually decided to link the rock to the character's foot. Um, now, unfortunately, or was it the character's foot? Yes, I think it was the character's foot. Uh, so whenever he runs around, the rock actually runs just like how his foot is because it's linked to his foot. Um, so I just think that's pretty funny how he did that. Like, see, you can see it moving, um, uh, like how his foot would move and stuff. So, of course, if you link it possibly to your body, uh, it would stay more still. And, of course, you could probably adjust the settings of that link and everything like that. And a little bit later, um, he makes a portal gun. Uh, now, of course, it's not exactly the same where it's like red and blue little, you know, uh, ovals and stuff like that up on a wall and everything. But he does, he is able to make it to where, where you hit the right tr trigger, it throws portal A. You hit the left trigger, it throws portal B. Uh, and so then, of course, once you walk through A, uh, then you teleport over to B and stuff. So it is pretty interesting. Of course, you tweak all the settings and stuff like that. You could probably make it where you throw it farther. Um, and also you throw, you know, maybe where it doesn't bounce around as much. Maybe whenever you throw it, it just kind of flops to the ground or something like that. Uh, but yeah, so he, he also made it to where immediately once you touch the portal and once you touch it once, um, it, uh, like teleports you over. So just in case, if you do get teleported over and you hit the portal again, like while you're walking out of the end teleporter, uh, you're not going to all of a sudden get teleported back. Uh, so you have to kind of like leave and then come back to it. So that's pretty cool. Uh, but yeah, so it's pretty awesome that you're actually able to make, recreate at least somewhat of a portal gun. I'm sure if you tweak it and everything like that a lot more than, you, you know, people can make a lot better uh, portal guns and not something like this uh, to where it's just, he just did this extremely quickly and it was amazing how he's able to do it this quickly uh, and it still works very well. So that's pretty awesome. All right, and lastly, they talk a little bit about how people have been wanting the possibility to be able to lock your levels uh, so people aren't able to edit them and stuff. But they did explain that, you know, they have a great way of being able to see, you know, the original creators giving all the credit to the people who originally created it. And of course, you know, having someone on there saying something like modified by this person and stuff. So, and another explanation here that they wanted to say because some people got confused. Um, if someone edits your level, like let's say you create a Skyrim style level and someone edits your level, um, your level, your save that you made of that level will not be affected. Uh, they're pretty much like saving their own world, but from your level and stuff like that. So it'll be their own world, but of course you will be showing up as the original creator because you originally created that world and the other people just kind of edited it around and stuff like that. Uh, so, you know, I just want to explain that a little bit and they also wanted to explain that to some people because some people are a little bit confused about that whole thing. And personally to me, I'm okay with not having a locking uh, feature on levels uh, just because, you know, you look at a lot of other communities that have things, you know, somewhat like this. Like if you think of Halo, um, they do have the Forge community and stuff and they are able to build levels. It's the same concept, of course, Project Spark is way more advanced. Um, but I'm just saying same concept of, you know, people can take other people's maps they create and edit them themselves. Uh, but, you know, people really don't, like some people do do that. They take a level, they edit it themselves, like, you know, mess with it and then save it as their own and then they claim it as their own. Or they just take a level and save it as their own and don't change anything and then they take claim to it. Uh, but the thing is, if some people do that, take claim to your level that you created, 
uh, then the people in the community know that. They see who the original creator is. They, you know, the community people are smart and stuff. They know the people who modified it uh, were not the original creators of this and stuff. So they, a lot of people will go look up the original creator's creation and download that one because that is the original. So personally to me, I'm perfectly fine with uh, not having the capability of locking your levels. And also, um, one thing that would be really cool uh, is like, what if someone makes a, you know, a, I don't know, one map that has a compilation of a whole bunch of created levels, you know, like, let's say, you know, like the best of 2013 or, you know, like best of the Project Spark beta. And then someone makes a one level where it has a whole bunch of, you know, teleport points in it, uh, where it level links over to the actual levels and stuff. So you can just go play on that one map and it level links to all the other really awesome levels and stuff. So, you know, that would be really awesome to be able to have something like that. So people can just, you know, go to one stop place, be able to see, oh, this is a great, you know, level. And, you know, I'm guessing there's going to be a bunch of other great ones on there because this is like the best of, you know, uh, the beta or something like that. And so they could just go to one map and then it level links all to the, you know, other cool levels that people have created. So, you know, that's, you know, that's my personal opinion, though. Uh, leave a comment down below on what y'all think about locking levels, uh, if it should be allowed or if it shouldn't. Um, but one other thing that I thought was really cool towards the end of the stream is that Claude, he created this thing where, you know, uh, he would shoot out like a magic spell, I guess you could say. It's that blue orb type of thing. Um, or I guess bluish greenish orb type of thing and you shoot it out and it you know creates like pylons and stuff But he also made it to where you shoot it out. It creates a little pylon of you know Dirt and it has a goblin on top and the goblin will throw a squirrel and then the squirrels as they run around They paint the world like uh, with the grass and everything paint and stuff And it's like that's just something that's really cool that project spark is able to do and it, you know, even though someone may not do that exact type of thing in a level, uh, but it kind of gives you the ideas of, wow, you can really do something that, you know, intricate and everything. Uh, imagine what you could do. Like, I know one of my previous examples was, um, what if you beat a boss in a level? Like, let's say it's a dragon and it has, you know, like it's an ugly landscape and stuff. I mean, like a really ugly, barren landscape. And then once you defeat the dragon, uh, and kill him then all of a sudden you know the world will turn and it'll spread from the point where the dragon was defeated and it'll spread and it'll grow into a lush you know world and stuff like that uh, because the evil is gone uh, so you know I just thinking that that would be really awesome to be able to have something like that in the level all right, but guys, I hope y'all really enjoyed this video. Please give it a like and favor and also subscribe. Um, I, you know, do all this stuff so that everyone that isn't able to watch the streams, they're able to at least watch a recap and then go click on the video if they do want to watch the full hour stream. Uh, but I hope y'all enjoyed this video, and I will see y'all next time. Later, guys.